Hello and welcome to the review of War Tales, a freshly released early access game. War Tales 1.0 has just released and you might ask yourself, is it worth the money? Well, ask no further as I'm going to explore and review in a short concise form the good, the bad and the ugly of uh, the game. In its core, War Tales is a tactical RPG that settles in a low magic medieval setting. It will include the management of your mercenaries with a sandbox approach, where you can reach out in order to do whatever you want, whether that is collecting bounties for freshly hunted uh, fugitives, or engaging into the storyline of each of the different regions. Currently, six regions are implemented and there are more to come. You can further strengthen your warband with new mercenaries, individual traits uh, and uh, individual skill trees. Each of them fulfills a vital function in your warband and helps you and the others to survive. The ultimate goal of War Tales is to survive and thrive in the medieval lands that uh, present a numerous set of challenges. Let's start with the good. The graphics of the game are fine. They are good, actually, compared to other games in the same genre, like Battle Brothers. This game is definitely a graphical update. Uh, everything is uh, 3D modeled. You can see details even of trinkets and other belt uh, items. The models themselves uh, seem well worked uh, through. Lighting and shading uh, works. The textures, uh, textures have been done uh, quite decently. And the interaction and animation of all of that in a combat environment works. On top of it, the frame rate uh, remains relatively stable even in a 50 versus 50 combat environment, which in itself is a great feature. The game itself, however, does maybe not uh, measure up to AAA titles due to the distinct lack of uh, graphical cutscenes and other animated interactions, movie scenes and the like. However, with a price point of $25 and a positioning in the AA uh, scene, it uh, is worth its money. War Tales does a good job in the sound department. The music itself is catchy, appropriate, medieval. It is good for a double-A game like War Tales. Nothing outstanding, but it gets the job done. The sound effects, on the other hand, are really good. They do have catchy chomp and thox uh, sounds uh, when you're hitting someone with your battle axe, and even the small sounds like grinding an axe or smithing new equipment are well delivered. Another positive aspect of uh, the game is its uh, quality side game or mini game content. Whether it is uh, the inclusion of uh, mini games to keep your party well fed and alive, or the few mini games uh, that you can use in order to feed your party, such as catching fish or the option to mine ore in a mine where every single hit becomes more and more difficult to hit until you finally miss your first strike. Or smithing items where every single strike counts, missing them might mean that the quality of your items deteriorates. The game delivers on a fundamental level where every single bit of survival counts towards the greater good of the party, making each of the professions also uh, with a combat advantage is a nice way of allowing progression to matter. The user interface of the game is crisp, well understandable and delivers what it is supposed to deliver. The game uh, makes sense as it's a tactical combat. Most of the skills are very easy to understand but difficult to execute. The interaction of the skills work as indicated and as you would expect and all of the classes feel fresh 
as well as uh, different to one another. You have plenty of opportunities in order to engage with the enemy and even the enemy's skills will catch you off guard from time to time. The combat is where War Tales truly shines and it is very much tailored around that. Losing your favorite hero in a permadeath game can be devastating, but it makes uh, the journey all so much sweeter. War Tales creates a great atmosphere and that to no lesser part is also based on the great interactions with NPCs. Most of the dialogues are voiced, the NPCs have realistic, albeit sometimes a little bit crude motivations behind it and you always find something to do in the game. Additionally, the game does a good job in explaining all of its features, the different weapons and armors are understandable and the in-game systems can be picked up quite easily. As an example here, I can compare a bow with a ability to attack twice on a critical hit against a bow with a higher base damage and the ability uh, to shoot up a single arrow. It is clear, concise, and the effects are immediately observable in the next battle. One of the distinct advantages in this game is the freedom of choices, whether it is the different animal taming options, the quest dialogues, the details of uh, what you can or cannot do, the management of captives, or the whole minigame around wanted status, or in this case, how I can select either of my companions to spend a night in a spooky haunted house. The game delivers on all of that. Despite all of its positive effects, the game still retains improvement potential as an early access game. That is not surprising as you will find more and more features uh, implemented. However, I need to judge the game based on its release and currently there are still a little bit more to be desired within the balancing. For instance, certain animals such as the polar bear are way too strong. They uh, stack uh, hit points and constitution to levels that are not seen. Certain path within the uh, current balancing are not really feasible, i.e. Uh, the archer really has a few paths that are available and others aren't working very well. The attribute influence greatly differs. Some attributes are highly influential such as willpower, critical hit and movement, whilst others aren't scaling very well or in some cases fail to scale uh, with uh, your levels. Dexterity as an example for our archer has around 20 starting stat, 18 from all of uh, its levels, then a few from profession and around 100 from equipment, which um, makes any form of uh, improvement of that stat throughout the game a bit of a waste. You could rather go for other stats. So overall, the balancing still needs to be looked at, particularly um, starting disadvantages, attribute points, and the overall economy. Stealing, for instance, is way too good in the game as it stands. Another point of criticism is the overall storyline, or rather, the lack thereof. The overarching narrative is non-existent. Although each of the different counties have their particular gripes and sometimes you need to solve a problem there, Tiltron has a refugee problem, other areas of uh, the world do have issues with a high profile murder, yet others are overrun by a disease. None of that really fits nicely together. They are more interactive, uh, sandboxy individual storylines. And whilst that is fine, it leads to another problem. And that problem is the gameplay loop which can be tedious after some time. The first area is exciting, fresh, a honeymoon phase where you're exploring all of the goodies of a sandbox game. 
Then you enter the second area with high hopes of new impulses, input and a few new mechanics and are greeted with the, relatively speaking, exact same interaction. You're starting in an area, you're trying to fight your way through the most important points of reference and you're moving to the uh, next points of reference, try to solve uh, the main quest there, do a few little side quests here and there and then move on ultimately to the next area. Whilst that is fun for people that really enjoy the um, grind and uh, the very core aspects of the game, a more gradual introduction of the concepts uh, such as stra strategy, um, depth, um, interaction of systems, sometimes even maybe skills or further attributes could have uh, helped to ease the pain and upon all having an overarching uh, storyline that uh, puts everything together would have certainly made the exploration of this otherwise very, very well done world even a bit more exciting. Which brings us to another problem, the experience curve as such. It starts out good and well balanced with a few hundred experience needed for the first levels but then all of a sudden it um, wildly goes up um, all the way to 5500 experience from level 11 to 12 which currently is uh, the maximum level in the game whilst it is fun at the beginning um, in the mid game around level 5, 6, 7 and 8 you will feel a substantial drag on experience. Enemies uh, start to give marginal experiences as best. Hard combats typically yield around uh, 60 to 80 uh, experience and you will need to find uh, a way of fighting a lot. You either grind your way through it or find the, the training dummy which allows two of your companions to train overnight and as long as you can afford it from a monetary standpoint you can just sleep over and over and over to level up that is not a great system and needs substantial revision which brings us to the last uh, qualms that i have with the game the lack of enemies um, or variety thereof there are a couple of options uh, for further improvement potential, specifically more variety in uh, maps. Indoor environments are missing, sea, naval environments or anything uh, like that could be implemented. But upon all, the enemies are quite one-dimensional. As much as I appreciate uh, humanoid enemies, they start to feel a little bit uh, repetitive. Uh, they do differ in color and clothing, but their skills fundamentally remain very similar. The only thing that the party uh, that the party system introduces is the ability uh, to have passive buffs, and that in itself might be okay for a few fights, but isn't necessarily changing anything drastically. This is a medieval uh, fantasy world. You could easily include uh, green skins, undeads, and more variety in terms of monsters. However, that might be where the modding community in the future comes in, as this great game has a great potential. So overall, what would I rate War Tales? War Tales as a game fundamentally is a gem. I truly enjoyed my time with the game. It is well worth the $25 that they are currently asking for. The game delivers on so many aspects, uh, has certainly the potential to become one of uh, the best uh, RPG tactical simulators. The management uh, of uh, your cohort, the medieval world, the interaction, the few stories here and there, the tactical battles, the depth of uh, what the game can deliver is all very well done. Enthusiasts in, in the game development uh, team that listen actively to the community help to make it even better. You will enjoy yourself if you are 
purchasing that early access game, even in its current uh, form. If you're willing to overlook the few flaws that an early access game uh, possesses, you are in for a treat. And I found myself more often than not playing two, three, four hours in a row, forgetting about uh, the time and other topics whilst thoroughly enjoying the role-playing experience. I'm a big fan of sandbox uh, games and I'm a big fan of tactical RPGs. And this here is the best of both worlds. It truly delivers on it, so I would give it 8 out of 10 stars with a few improvement potentials to become a really, really outstanding game in the future. If you have found this review helpful and if it uh, gave you enough information, then I would uh, like you to give a few uh, shout outs to the like button and uh, try to convince it to erect itself. Try to look at my channel and see if you like other reviews, guides and gameplay footage. And otherwise, have a good time with War Tales. Enjoy your journey. Bye bye.